Welcome back to Be Varsity Live. Zach and Trevor here with you. Uh, our thanks to Ryan Crowley of Bakersfield High School for coming in the night after winning the Mayor's Trophy. I'm sure he partied well into the night. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that doesn't seem like his his style. No, he probably did his entrance exam to Stanford and set up his, you know, the next community service project that he's going to do long into the night and, you know, and, and, you know, make sure that his dad's schedule at the dermatology office is all set up and then saved a couple of lives. Yeah. Yeah. That sort of thing. So yeah. Then decided to take about two hours of sleep and was probably Spider-Man at some point around town. We don't know. It's funny you say that we asked him after the award for excellence, the hall, the hall of fame thing. Do you ever sleep? And he goes, yeah, actually, I really like to sleep, so I have to fit that in, too. So that was part of it, too. Uh, but anyway, Ryan hey man, Crowley, I'm a huge advocate for that. I'm if, a huge if, advocate for sleep Dude, if you well, could sleep, I, sleep. I don't – this whole – Are you a fan of sleep, Brandon? I am a big I, fan I of sleep. I think everybody's game. a big fan of sleep once you hit a certain age. Dave uh, – well, uh, let's ask Dave because yeah, Dave – let's, let's introduce yes. who we've got in here now, first of all. No. Uh, down on the end there is Coach Dave Hillstead, Stockdale Boys Tennis, and his number one player this year, Brandon Park, is a sophomore at Stockdale. Welcome in, guys. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Sorry – just I want to go back to the, the craziness that is no, the I Zach go, and Trevor show. I want to go back to the sleeping because, Dave, you are much like Zach where you both have a child that's just over a year old. How, there are well, nights when the sleep does not yeah. come as soon as you would like. Yeah, yeah right. just about. That's right. Okay. Although she's sleeping now through the night, so we're good. It's I am while, insanely but. jealous of you because I've got <laughs> I've got a 19 month old who was sleeping through the night and then sort of forgot how, and oh, so yeah. now we're going through. And now he's <laughs> big enough and strong enough to exert his will. Now I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> not now. So uh, he asked to watch Toy Story at about 3 in the morning this morning, and that was fun. God, he's a smart kid. So I said, no, no. Well, he doesn't actually say Toy Story, but he has a word for it. He goes, da, 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 you know, and that, we know what that means. And well, so, he could have come over to Uncle Trevor's house because I was watching Remember the Titans last night before bed. So. Well, could you have put him to sleep? I'm going to take you up on that if you say yes. I could have told him a bunch of stories that you usually fall asleep to. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> yep, the, let's go. the uh, Central Section Boys Tennis individual championships are this week, and the team team titles are all wrapped up. They most of them wrapped up yesterday. Stockdale, you guys made it to the semifinals in Division One, uh, but now sort of the second chance at glory, right? Is the individual titles and Brandon, you're the number two seed in the singles tournament. Uh, you've obviously had a terrific year, unbeaten <laughs> against high school competition this year. How are you feeling heading into this weekend? The- Heading in, I'm actually very comfortable. I mean, I have to go in knowing that I need to be able to win this, and only my mindset is just to win the win the tournament. Okay, so that's that's where it ought to be. I think. Yeah. Uh, do me a favor, guys, when you talk, it right on that mic. Okay? Uh, okay, like you can move it if you need to, but just just be the DJ and be right on the mic. Right. Um, it, so you're number two seed, but you're unbeaten. Number one seed is Daley Minard, who is a senior at Clovis North. He won the tournament as a sophomore. He was second last year. Uh, have you played Daley outside of high school tennis? Last year, I did play Daley. It okay. was my first year. Didn't go too well, but I want the rematch this year. What do you know yeah. about his game? I mean, is that sort of the matchup you're, you're sort of looking forward to and planning for in some, some ways? Uh, I mean, last time when I went in the match, I didn't really know his game. But now... Maybe it's the same, maybe it's not, just depends, but I'll just play my game and I should be able to do well. Got to worry about your, your side of the court. And, and to that end, uh, for people who haven't seen you play, how do you describe your game? My game, uh, I don't like to miss the ball because I don't like giving easy points away. And I'm just a very patient player. I like to get my first serves in, everything in, and then go for the shots when it's necessary to. So d- be, be patient, 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 patient and then patient. aggressive when the moment strikes yes. and kind of know when that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, you've had a lot of good players at Stockdale, a lot of great players at Stockdale. Uh, Brandon's only a sophomore, and he's already doing pretty good things. What, what, what do you think of this guy and how he's grown already in just a couple years? Yeah, the big difference between this year and last year is when he, like, for example, when he played daily, I don't think he was really ready to – um, take the next step and beat some of these guys. Now he's, like he said, he's more patient, like a lot more patient. He knows when to use his power. And the growth I've seen from him from last year to this year has been immense. I mean, it just shows in his, in his attitude. It shows in his, uh, his accomplishments. I mean, I've never had a kid this late in the year be undefeated. Mm-hmm. And I've had a two-time Valley champ that didn't do that. So he's uh, really done an excellent job this year. He, he's very patient. Um, but I'll tell you what, when he is on, he's very difficult to play. He's, 
You know, I know he says he's patient, but there are times when he's on that he's just, he's blowing guys off the court. I mean, he's lost a total of like seven or eight games. I mean, games. Games. Yeah, uh, as in game, not, in the not matches or sets. Right. We're talking games. And yeah. the, big, the big win that really made me realize he was over the hump is when he beat the defending section champ from last year. He beat him 0-2. And that was really solid. And I knew at that point... He turned the corner and he was ready to keep on going. And that would be Dylan Simons and Garces, who is not in the Valley draw this year, left the, the Garces team late in the year, uh, which means you're the number two seed, Nathan Kwan of Bakersfield Christian, another sophomore, right? Am I, am I right? No, he's a freshman. He's a freshman. Uh, at BCHS, he is the number three seed. So if seeds hold, that's who you would meet Saturday morning. This is all going on in Tulare, by the way. Saturday morning in the semifinals. And – you have played Nathan this year once, right? I actually you, did, you have not, no, so you could have a couple of fresh matches on Saturday, guys. You haven't seen in more than a year. Uh, what do you know about that matchup with with Nathan Kwan? Well, I mean, I'm used to beating him because I played him in my junior years okay. as the 12s and 14s, and I just go in the match calm, not overthinking, and I should be fine. Right, and obviously yeah. you've gotten better since then. He's probably gotten better since then. Yeah. So we're talking Everyone's about a different improved. matchup. Yeah. Well, and there's another guy that's on that side of the bracket that we can't forget about too, and that's Caleb Johnson, who was a two-time B Varsity Player of the Year. When you talk about, you know, over the last few years, Caleb won it as a freshman, sophomore, and obviously Dylan won yep. it last year. So, I mean, Dave, for you, I mean. I, I've talked to Bill Bradley up at Buchanan, and I think that one through nine, this might be one of the deepest fields that the singles championship in the central section has had probably in the last half decade. For the guys, definitely yeah. one of the deepest. I mean, and Caleb, we're not look, overlooking Caleb either. He is an no. excellent player. That's the thing. Um, that's a quarterfinal. He's taken, I believe, third the last two years yeah, he's, in the Valley. Last so that's, year he took fourth. But last year, fourth, fourth yeah, yeah, and maybe th third or fourth the year before. But anyway, the point is he's been beyond the quarters, and you've got to beat him. Yeah, to get yourself beyond exactly. the court. Exactly. Yeah. Dave, you you also have a couple of doubles teams in the doubles draw, I believe, seated fifth uh, and sixth. Fifth, no, fifth, fifth and fourteenth. Okay, yep. fifth, fifth and fourteenth. Uh, tell us about those those teams. Um, I like my chances with my five seed. Um, my fourteenth seed is a couple of guys that have just recently, in my opinion, turned the corner and started playing and beating some really high quality doubles teams. Uh, my fifth seed, um, you know. One of the two kids was third in the Valley last year. Give us their name. Which is Andrew name. Huang. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other kid, his doubles partner bailed on him in the, um, I guess you'd say the area. And so he had to pick up a new partner. He still wound up in the top 16. Mm -hmm. We're talking about so Raghavir Kanani. Raghavir Kanani. Yep. And so they're both great doubles players. We just beat the Clovis West number one in four players in doubles when we played the team with that particular team of uh, Kanani and Huang. So they're tough. They're very good. Um whether or not we get by Clovis North, I and mean, we have to first look at the team the, that beat us in our league championship. The Shafik brothers over the, at Liberty. The Shafik brothers yeah. and from Liberty, that's going to be our second round. So that's going to be a tough matchup right there. If we can get by that one, I would say then we have a very good chance of making it to the final. If we beat the number one seed in the semis, I think we can go all the way. Well, that's all. yeah, that, that's the key right there. And I keep yeah. I, I tell my players, don't fear anyone. I said, you guys are fantastic, and they are. They're very good doubles players. I said, they need to be fearing you, not the other way around. So a seed is a number. You have to beat everybody in the tournament to become a Valley champion. Right. Sure. So I don't think the seed with them matters. They could be five, they could be six, but I think they're good enough to win it all. You, you, the, the way the tennis season works in the central section, for those who don't know, you, you, you have the team championships decided first and then the individual championships. So it creates this dynamic where um, whether you win or lose the team, you've either got that elation of winning a team championship, which you've done many times, Dave, or you have the disappointment of, of having your season ended before you wanted it to, like you had this year. But then you kind of kind of turn around and turn the focus to the individuals. How do you do that? Well, that's what happened with my, my second doubles team of uh, Andy, Andrew Ramirez and Kenny Lay. They lost a couple of tough singles matches in our team match. Then they turn around and knock off the six seed and then the three seed in our area tournament mm -hmm. to qualify for Valley. So they understood. I mean, they have done exactly what we were talking about, where we didn't have a good, let's say, a team competition, although it was four to five, it was close. But they are now playing some fantastic doubles individually. And I believe it's this is their chance to make something of their season when it was a little bit disappointing. I'm not going to lie on the team side of it. Right. But I'm just very proud of those two just making it. And I think they have a chance, too, to possibly knock off the three seed in the first round. I mean, we'll a little, see little bit of a dark horse. How about you, Brandon? How, how, how do you sort of juxtapose those two things where you wanted to win as a team, I'm sure it came up just short, and now, hey, i got to change my focus. And, and maybe luckily for you, you've had a whole week to do that. <laughs> Actually, when I play, in, 
as an individual or just team, I just go in the same, just winning it for the team and myself. Because in individuals, if you win a match, it's for your actually your team too. Right. You're representing Stockdale. It says Stockdale next to your name. That's that's for sure. And then to that's that a end, veteran comment right when, there. When you are done playing, and and you've been done playing before, a lot of your teammates a lot this year because you you don't give uh, up for yeah. the games. <laughs> and that may be the case this weekend as well. Uh, how much are you paying attention to how they're doing in this individual tournament and rooting rooting them on? I pay very close attention to them. Like when I'm done, I go around the courts and I cheer on the people who need it the most. Can I say that yeah. he stayed? I mean, I had a comment from two different of our, our league coaches said, you know, Brandon, after he's done with singles and he qualified, he stayed around to watch both of our teams qualify for Valley. He mm -hmm. doesn't give up on our team. He's there supporting us. He's just been a fabulous number one. First kid that comes to my tennis courts is the first one there. I mean, he's just been a fantastic leader, almost a, ahead of his time as a sophomore. Uh, just leadership, because you know he could have taken off. I mean, it's an individual tournament, but he stuck. He stuck around. He watched both of the doubles matches, and his maturity level is, like I said, that of a senior. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's he will. He will never. He, he's all about team. Yeah. He's all about team. I mean, he's a fantastic player. And I, but I even like his comment about you know there's a Stockdale next to his name so yep. he's doing it for us too. When did you uh, when did you start playing tennis, Brandon? I started playing when I was eight. When you were eight, so yeah. not as early as some players. Not um, as early. Yeah. How how quickly did you sort of become one of the tops in your age group and and how did that process take place? Uh, it was a slow start in the beginning because I was a very nervous junior player and then I want to say right when I turned ten. I started becoming more calm, older player, mature, and started winning all these tournaments and getting pretty high up in the rankings. Hey, Brandon, why? Uh, how did your older sister, Jessica, who was a first-team all-area golfer, um, how did she go to golf and then you went to tennis? Was there just – did you guys just realize that you like different sports or did you ever look at your sister and go, maybe I can do that? Or you were like, no, I don't want to do what my sister does. How did that whole family I, dynamic happen? <laughs> I – we actually both tried golf because my parents both loved to golf as a mm -hmm. hobby. So she actually stuck with it. I thought it was too boring. <laughs> <laughs> golf can be I, very uh, frustrating. <laughs> it's very frustrating. And I like more action in a sport. And I like to hit things over nets like volleyball. I actually started out playing yeah, volleyball. If you're oh, you do play volleyball. Okay. I did before. And then I switched over to tennis. Yeah, because if you're hitting golf balls over a net you're not playing the the sport right that, that's, now. That's, <laughs> that's not what you want because yeah. those are out of bounds not right. over regulation uh brandon what if the, if there's one part of your game that has to be working well for you to win a championship this weekend what would you say it is uh it's hard to <laughs> hard to pick just one I guess. yeah because everything's pretty neutral uh he needs all yeah. of it. I mean, uh, he is solid. That's why players have a hard time playing him, because he's so solid. He's solid off the four, and he's solid off the back, and he's got a great serve. He returns well. Uh, they bring him, and he volleys well. I mean, I but I would say, I mean, if I can answer for you, because I know him pretty well, I think his serve is going to be key. Mm I think if he serve. serves well, I think he's going to do very well. Well, I think the one thing, uh, when, we, when I came back from the SWL Championships, you know, I spent a lot of time that day just watching Brandon play, even as quickly as it was. And I came back to Zach, you know, who was a successful high school tennis player. No, I'm just I, don't, I, I was a <laughs> you were high a, school You were player. a high school tennis player. And I think the one thing that we both took away from that is um, – the strength in his backhand, in your backhand, Brandon, is that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Dave, do you see that? That, that one you know, hand whip. You know, a lot backhand. of kids have uh, a lot of strength. Oh, do you, are you two hand? I'm, a two I, I'm trying to remember the the video now, but yeah, yeah, well, really whack that thing. Because you know, most righties are conditioned to exploit the backhand, right? But with Brandon, you can't exploit his backhand because it may be just as good as his forehand or better at times. Wow. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's. That is one area of strength of his that's very tough for people to deal with because you can't hit to his back. Because you can, you almost have to play him in that respect, like he's a lefty, but then obviously you don't want to hit it to his forehand. No. So yeah, you no. get you, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place there. So assuming you get by the, the number 15 seed in the first round, you kind of got to run the gauntlet here. We we mentioned Caleb Johnson, then Nathan Kwan, and then and then uh, um, Daily Miner. Assuming seeds hold all three, but if you can do it, uh, 
you will have earned the championship, that's for sure. So <laughs> good luck this weekend, and thanks for joining us. Right, thank you. Thanks for that's, having us. This is Brandon Park of Stockdale, Coach Dave Hillstead of the uh, boys' tennis team. This is B-Varsity Live, and we'll be back after this to wrap things up.